the science has come out on alcohol and it's atrociously bad. Small amounts will damage your DNA. It'll rewire your, your neural circuitry. And it's not even about not ever drinking it again. I just, I want to give guys a break and to restore their bodies and minds. Take a girl and a guy and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate. A dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. Hi, I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean, and this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Check us out online at couplesynergy.com or on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and links, LinkedIn at Couple Synergy. And please subscribe to our podcast, leave us a review, or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for over 25 years. Everyone says you should work on your relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So we've created this podcast to teach people what they can do to create the relationship they've always dreamed of. With the partner they fell in love with. On today's episode, we welcome Clifford Stefan. Clifford is the founder of Booze Vacation, a health and wellness company for high-performing men who want to take their lives and careers to the next level, all by using the massive benefits that come from a break from booze as leverage to do so. Clifford, we want to Thank you so much for being on our podcast today and for talking about this uh, pretty important topic, uh, as we know that uh, alcoholism and alcohol abuse can be a, a detriment to healthy relationships. So thank you for being on our podcast. Hey, Dr. Ray and Jean, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And I yeah. agree. And uh, to throw in my tagline, it's also it's also a good hack for, for better relationships and being a better partner. And um uh, yeah, not really targeting alcoholics or problem drinkers, but more just kind of the, the typical, you know, work hard, play hard. You know, you get a college degree, you, you get a corporate job, and it kind of follows you everywhere. And and over time, it, it kind of starts have, having some effects on you that can be a little tricky with, with age and wear and tear and a lot of responsibilities. So some yeah, absolutely you're hitting on. So, you know, before we go into talking about booze vacations and kind of how it got started, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of what, what your own personal story is? Sure. And I'll maybe make it a little bit more relationship based because I know you guys typically have couples on. Uh, yeah, I'm 51. I'm married. I have uh, two girls, um, younger girls, and uh, been married for 18 years. And yeah, super lucky to uh, wind up with a, with a great partner. And uh, yeah, so real, real happy with that. It's, it's definitely been um, a lear <laughs> an ongoing learning experience. And um, yeah, and I was also, but yeah, we got, I got married in my kind of a little bit early thirties. So that helped because I think in my twenties, I, I definitely was kind of immature and, and, you know, again, not an alcoholic, but definitely, you know, very social and like to party and like to go with friends and events and, all the crazy stuff you do in your twenties. And I was actually, I was in a relationship for a good seven, eight years and was engaged and I, that wasn't looking like it was going to be successful. So I was able to kind of have a fresh start and kind of, you know, again, in your twenties, uh, me in particular, I don't think I really knew what I wanted, but I, I kind of figured out what I didn't want. So that was valuable and was able to find, you know, someone that met those needs. And so, real happy and blessed that I was able to do that because it's such a big, important decision and it has really profound effects on your life and happiness. So, so yeah, it's all pretty blessed perspective. Um, and yeah, I, as far as, so that's a little bit about me and my backstory, kind of how I came to find booze vacation and founded booze vacation. Again, me and my buddies, we played sports, played some of my peers. I find, have a similar story, you know, drink in high school and college. But when you're starting to drink a little bit early, it, it does predispose you to kind of have your alcohol use over time, just kind of physiologically. Um, but yeah, you know, it's kind of a work hard, play hard mentality and try to just have as much fun and make some money and, and, you know, get married and all that stuff. And I think 
it, you know, as you get into your thirties and, and especially your forties, it starts to, you know, the effects, uh, the effects of alcohol use, even at socially responsible levels can, can have a, a pretty significant impact just kind of on your overall health and wellness, which in turn, you know, affects your attention and your empathy for your partner and, and just your ability to be at your best, to manage stress, th- those types of things. So I, I wasn't really looking for the solution, but I, you know, I'm kind of a health nut. I, I played a lot of sports. I got a degree in nutritional science. And so I always kind of prided myself as being a good, you know, you know, good, healthy, active guy. And kind of as I got into my forties, I, I was, I was kind of struggling with just kind of my sleep and my stress levels and my, my performance and my really my happiness, you know, I think it was kind of dragging everything down. So I, I was pretty proficient at at diet and exercise and supplements and kind of turned over every last stone except for drinking because, you know, it's just me and my buddies always did it and it's kind of everywhere and it's, it's socially acceptable. It's in corporate America. It's kind of wherever you go. And so it was kind of the last thing I looked at. I did, wind up taking a one year break. I called it a booze vacation to kind of make a joke out of it and, you know, get my buddies off my, off my back, which they kind of laughed at. And it was, it wasn't a big deal, but yeah, I just had really profound benefits. It just kind of seemed to make everything easier and better and improve my relationships, improve my health and, and wellness. And so I was real excited about it. And, you know, I was telling all my buddies, I'm like, Hey, this is really cool. You should check it out. And, you know, I found out pretty quickly that, I couldn't really have those conversations. It's, there just wasn't an appetite or an interest in it. And it kind of just, it honestly just kind of pissed me off. And I was just like, man, this, this system is pretty bad because, you know, guys don't talk about it. They don't try it. They don't see, see the benefits and examples of it. And so it's a pretty predictive model. And now that I'm in my fifties, I can kind of see how it can kind of have, you know, kind of negative consequences. And so, kind of trying to be a good buddy. I'm like, okay, some, some guys got to be take, take one for the team and kind of start talking a little bit of trash on alcohol, even though I think guys really prefer to play dumb with it and just kind of laugh off all the negative symptoms because we just kind of get stuck in associating alcohol with fun friends, events and a reward system. And, and yeah, I mean, I was pre, I was pre, you know, dating apps and stuff like that. So we had to actually go up and talk to girls and I'd prefer to be doing that with a couple of drinks in my hand. Not that I was a big uh, ladies man or anything like that, but yeah, definitely. I think my generation, especially, I think it was, we were a little tighter with, with alcohol just because it kind of gave us a little liquid courage to be able to talk with, talk with people and stuff like that. So now did you meet your wife on a booze vacation at the time? Okay. So yeah. So booze vacation is, you know, essentially just kind of a fun aspirational way of saying, Hey, I'm taking an extended break. So a booze vacation is a three to 12 month break. And, um, and yeah, it's kind of just a fun way to say it versus like, Oh, I'm on the wagon or am I, you know, I got, like, you know, got some bad blood work. So it's just kind of more fun, aspirational, jokey way. But actually I did kind of meet my wife on a booze vacation. Um, now that you mention it. So I was about to turn 30. I got laid off from a tech job in Silicon Valley. I had, you know, I dated a gal that it didn't work out and I was in San Jose or what I would call man Jose. Cause there's a lot of dudes and not a lot of females. <laughs> and so I was, uh, I was bitching to my buddy. I'm like, man, the girls in this town suck. I'm about to get laid off. You know, this is not looking good for me. And he's like, he's like, you should go to Europe. You should go. And I'm like, yeah, I should. And he's like, you should go on this Contiki tour. I'm like, yeah, I should. So I wound up going on this guided tour. It's like 18 to 35 year olds on a bus. It's kind of like backpacking light. We had like eight countries in 14 days. And I wound up meeting my wife who wasn't from Europe, but was from Kentucky. And um, yeah, we kind of got the date throughout like, you know, Italy and Florence and Austria and Paris. And so, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty epic. So we got to kind of date throughout Europe and and she was in Kentucky and I was in um, and I was in California and, and we actually met on a kind of a canal tour of, of Amsterdam with like the best Heineken I've ever had. And so, yeah, it was, it was a really neat experience and um, pretty funny story. Um, I was kind of like, you know, meeting people because we had like 50 kids on this bus and 
I was kind of like, oh, you're, I'm Clifford from California. You're Angela from Kentucky. Oh, those are pretty stylish pants for someone from Kentucky. You know, kind of was just kind of just talking, but it kind of came off as like a backhanded compliment. And she was like, what's that supposed to mean? And it was kind of like, you know, from there it kind of kicked off kind of a fun banter. But yeah, it worked out pretty well. It was kind would of a boost vacation. Would you say that like the work hard, play hard competes with being in a healthy relationship? Oh, absolutely. And you know, as I, I mature, you know, like I said, I think I was pretty immature in my 20s and even in my 30s. I think, you know, just regular alcohol use kind of just, you know, just kind of taxes your body and system and your sleep and your mood and your energy and your in your in your brain. And so I think I think a lot of my peers be focused on, yeah, you know, work hard, play hard. And so, yeah, you got to take care of the job and then you want to go have some fun. But, you know as a partner, as a parent, you know, sometimes that can take more of a backseat. And I think especially you know, the reality is, even though we're not alcoholics, you know, there is some physical and emotional dependence there with alcohol that it creates by kind of rewiring, rewiring your neural circuitry. You know, the reality is if you're having five plus drinks a week, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot, but that will rewire your neural circuitry. So you'll have higher stress, lower mood, you'll have less impulse control, you'll have more anxiety and it's going to impact your sleep and it's going to impact your digestion. So it does make you less of a, you know, of a productive partner. And I think it's pretty easy for guys to be, you know, a little bit more almost in, in some, in some cases when you're working pretty hard and you are maybe a little bit physically dependent on alcohol to some degree, I think you can kind of, maybe not value your partner and your family as much because, you know, you're not having beers with them, you know, with the, and watching the game with your buddies. So it could be, it, it can kind of create a little bit of competition there and, and maybe some bad, bad behaviors and, and bad, you know, energy or dynamics around that. If that makes sense. Well, it could definitely be very de divisive, right? I mean, there's a lot of uh, business cultures out there that alcohol is intertwined with. Yeah. You know, and so that whole work hard, play hard guys go out, you know, after work and hang out and, and drink it. It's kind of a, a bonding experience as well. And, and so I imagine that a lot of guys would feel on the outs. Right. You know, especially if they're in sales and they're meeting with clients or even in, in politics in that realm, alcohol is so intertwined in it. So, you know, how does how does someone stay successful like in that type of culture where drinking is a big part of it and also have a good relationship? You know, that, that would be, it seems like it's counterintuitive. Yeah. I think you're, you kind of hit on, hit the nail on the head there. It's, it's definitely kind of competing forces and it's also kind of a timing issue. I think a lot of my peers and maybe myself included, you know, I think in your twenties, you know, it's kind of, you're going all, you're going all in. So you're trying to build your career. You're trying to, you know, set up a relationship and you're trying to cram in as many fun activities as possible, which usually, you know, revolve around alcohol and you're absolutely right. Sales in particular corporate and, and I was in Silicon Valley. So there's always kind of parties and events and, and stuff like that. And it goes kind of hand in hand. And so, yeah, I think that's, it's, it's, it's kind of tricky, but you know, I'm kind of targeting guys that are like, they, you know, they're start, you know, they have their families now. They've, you know, they've kind of found their footing in their careers, and now they're kind of essentially stuck with a program, you know, an operating system that might be have been like birthed like in high school or college, and they're still kind of using that same operating system in their 30s and 40s, and they're finding out some of the limitations of that because you know, al you know, alcohol changes over time with tolerance and age and wear and tear, and you know, I do think, and that's kind of the whole birthing of the the reason behind taking a, an extended vacation from drinking because cutting back or dry January or you know taking a month off it doesn't it doesn't give your the your neural circuitry enough time to rewire so you're still even if you took a month off or you tried to cut back you're still going to be at a deficit you're still probably at 60 70 percent and so you really need especially guys that might drink a little bit more they, they really need a good six month break to really rewire their neural circuitry, 
and not only that, but get the at bats socially and at work events and be able to like be able to navigate and learn how to relax and have fun without it. And, you know, to your question, how do the, how do you do that? You know, in a work setting, I mean, yeah, you got it. Initially, it's a little awkward. Um, I think the key to it, you know, since we're not alcoholics, it's it's on the the nuts and bolts of it isn't hard to do. It's just really getting your mind around it. And I think for males in particular, it's so embedded in our culture and in, in our reward system that and and in our identity. So kind of just not doing that even temporarily is is really kind of entering the twilight zone and it could be kind of scary. But what you'll find when you do take an extended break and we're not about just taking a break and not doing anything else like we're about getting after it and kind of going on a land grab when it comes to just your health and your fitness and performance and relationships and side hustles and and just really getting after it in all on all levels. But what you'll find is when you're you're sleeping better and you're you're more fit and you look and feel better and you're sharper, you know, you'll be able to handle those social events just as well, if not more. You know, I think a lot of times, especially like in corporate America, sometimes, you know, you might not be totally interested in the people you're with or they might not really be your type but you get a couple drinks in you and you know you can you can make make it make it fun but it's not you know again it's kind of it's kind of just a little bit of a game we play and then it winds up affecting our sleep and our performance and our relationships and and things like that so i think it's um yeah it's a little bit of just stepping into the unknown and and testing the boundaries and and really giving your body and mind a chance to reset because I think a lot of people given the chance, you know, again, it's almost like when you tell, when I tell a typical peer, you know, Hey, you should consider a break. What happens is we're kind of asking the wrong person right now because they're not at a hundred percent. So they can't really answer that question. So right now they're not sleeping well, they're kind of stressed. They have bad blood work. They're a little overweight. They're not in the best relationship. And so they're kind of like at that 60%. So they're kind of like, no, I just want to like have some fun, man. Like I want to have some beers and I I don't want to deal with this right now. But what will happen if you actually sack up and do it is you'll like find out that things are easier and better and you'll have more of an opportunity to make an actual choice. I think that's kind of one of the reasons why I founded Booze Vacation is I believe guys just don't get get a choice. You know, it's like it's everywhere. It's in corporate, you're supposed to do it. It's with your, you know, it's how you relate to your buddies. And I think people thinking about not doing it is just a kind of a non-starter. And then they just don't wind up ultimately getting a choice. And they wind up signing up for things that they wanted nothing to do with, like bad blood work, erectile dysfunction, low testosterone, and you know, cancers, all kinds of crazy stuff that can start happening in your 40s and 50s. And so, you know, I think it's it's just something that every guy should do. And, and, um, you know, I'm targeting males cause I'm a male and I'm kind of staying in my lane, but our message is resonating really well with females as well. We have probably 45% of our signups are females. So, you know, again, I'm kind of talking, talking more straight talk, just health, wellness, performance, and not pointing fingers or pushing sobriety. We're not targeting alcoholics, but just kind of trying to have that converse an honest conversation about it because, Typically, our society kind of likes to play dumb, especially males when it comes out. Now, now there is this uh, there is this trend uh, happening with non-alcoholic beverages, right? A lot of not of non-alcoholic beers uh, brands have come out with their own, and then also there's like uh, non-alcoholic whiskeys and things like that. What well, what is what is uh, Booze Vacation's standpoint on that? Oh, we're all, we're all about it. So again, it's, it's not like we're anti-alcohol or anything like that. We just really want to give guys a choice. We, and it's also a time sensitive need. We want them. It's a lot easier to restore your health than than try to reverse chronic disease. So we'd like to engage with, with guys in their thirties and forties before their risk of chronic disease really start to ramp up. And yeah, what you'll find when you're not kind of somewhat on that dependence curve with alcohol, you'll, what you'll find with these these non-alcoholic beers and cocktails is they taste great and there's some muscle memory. So if you've been drinking beer for 30 years or in my case, 30 years, and you have a non-alcoholic beer that tastes great, you'll have like, you know, some muscle memory there. So you'll still get a little bit of a buzz and, and it won't be weird. But you, again, you just think it's weird when you're, when you're kind of still in that cycle of, of never taking a break, but yeah, it's, it's, there's been a real ramp up. 
of yeah na brands and i think you know they're starting to get a better toehold you know what's happened is the science has come out on alcohol and it's atrociously bad like if anybody if anybody doubts what i'm saying there's an andrew huberman podcast on alcohol and it's just like it's so bad as far as like there's like a, you know small amounts will damage your dna it'll rewire your neural circuitry it creates um a leaky gut it just creates chronic inflammation yada yada it's just it's it's all terrible stuff and so i think it's kind of like the cigarettes of the 50s you know it's like it, the, the the words out but you know they still have a pretty compelling product that creates a lot of dependence and they still spend 10 billion a year on it and have the world's most beautiful people hawking it so and again it's not even about not ever drinking it again i just i want to give guys a, a break and to restore their bodies and minds and and um you know see how 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 much fun they can have without it by increasing their activity levels having better relationships having better sex having less problems having less drama and so um but yeah i i really think you know again if i was I, I've t some of my buddies that are alcoholics are like, oh, I don't want fake beer. Like that's, uh. but for, for me, it's like, it's a perfect crime. You know, it's like, they taste good. You're, you're, you know, I'll have three of them. It's like, why would you drink three of them? You know, ah, cause I feel like it and it's fun and they taste good, you know? So um, I think they're, I think they're great. And uh, yeah, there's some really good ones. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a connoisseur. I know what, I know which flavors we, we like. That's actually one of our challenges on booze vacation if you go, you know, we we're, our charters kind of help you get smarter with your drinking and tools and resources to do that. And actual, and you can actually take a, a three to 12 month vacation all for free. And one of our challenges is to find your favorite. And so, yeah, especially if you go to like Total Wines or BevMo, some of these bigger party stores, they have like a crazy amount of selections. And so, and yeah, some of them are completely terrible and some of them are fantastic. And we have kind of a cheat sheet on on some good ones, but yeah, there's some really good ones. There's some good hop water um, that are, you know, no calories. And again, they're, they're, they're quite nice. And there's some really good cocktail stuff as well, but, but uh, I haven't explored them all, but yeah, they're, they're the perfect crime is the way I look at them. <laughs> what about couples who socialize and drink together and maybe one of them wants to make a change? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And, you know, I do think that, you know, guys typically in my, my peer groups, at least they probably drink a little bit heavier. And I do think that I see it in my peer groups where, you know, I think women are catching on. They're, they're definitely targeted more with, you know, marketing because they were kind of like, uh, you know, the next market to, to go after. And so I think a lot of, and, and let's be honest, like any show you watch, like every scene is like somebody drinking a cocktail or wine or whatever. So it's just kind of, it's just so pervasive, but you know, I, when I do convince my buddies to, to take a booze vacation and then the wives are kind of resistant, you know, like, which I've had before, I find it really unfortunate because, you know, I think they're really, you know, when guys are, are actually ready to take a vacation, you know, I think it's really important for the wives to support them because, you know, they're going to be a lot better partner. They're going to be a lot better, you know, parent. And, but I, and, and to your point, I do think it's a great opportunity to do it together. And again, it might be kind of tricky to get the stars aligned when both people are ready to do it. But, you know, even if one person does it and the other person, you know, kind of helps them out by, not buying their favorite beer or not having it, you know, so handy. I think it's important. You know, I'm not here to tell you, tell couples exactly what to do, but I can tell you that, you know, like anything, if you can do something that's a little bit challenging together, there's going to be camaraderie, there's going to be a closeness there. And, and, you know, there's going to be some really good gains and insights from it. And, you know, ultimately, when you take a break from alcohol, you're just going to wind up with more time, money, energy, better sleep better hormone levels, you know, better connection and just, you're just going to have an elevated mood. So I think those are all good, um, good environments for a good relationship. And it's also a way of just kind of mixing things up, right? Like, I mean, alcohol is very predictive and yeah, like any, any jerk can go drink six beers with their buddies and have fun on a Friday night. But like, what about Tuesday afternoon? What about Thursday night when there's not alcohol? You know, that's when I think you kind of make your money because, um, you know, I think alcohol can make you kind of focus more on future. Like when's that event? When's that dinner? When's that party? 
but it's like, it's all you have is right now. And so, you know, be present, be grateful, be in a state where you actually enjoy being in. And, and that could be tricky when you're, you know, associating with a, you know, depressant with fun. How has booze vacation impacted your own relationship, your own marriage? Yeah, that's a good question. So it's been helpful. You know, like I said, I, <laughs> I feel like kind of a man child, like in my twenties for sure. And now I'm, I'm in my fifties, 51. And yeah, I think it's, it's definitely, you know, I'm, I'm talking about all these, some of these negative feedback loops and effects of just kind of socially drinking. And I definitely was, was a recipient of that. I slept poorly. I, you know, it messed with my productivity It increased my stress. I was kind of, you know, foggy, uh, kind of, you know, I already have maybe a little bit of ADD. So those are all not optimal things to be a good partner and an attentive partner and empathy and stuff like that. And so I think it's really, it's really affected my ability to be a good partner because I'm just more level and I'm more present. I have more energy and yeah, a little less reactive, able to better handle my handle my handle stressful situations. I perform better. So my confidence and esteem is up. So it just has a lot of small ripple effects, but you know, I also have a really good partner um, that communicates well. That was one thing that I, I didn't really do well, but yeah, it obviously takes two, but it's, it kind of just sets the table for, you know, you just kind of coming at a hundred percent as your best. And so hopefully between that and your partner, you can, you can kind of figure it out, but it's made a big difference for sure. How does the booze vacation interact with or affect the relationships you have with your drinking buddies? Yeah. You know, it's cool. And, and it's funny because again, I did it. For the reason, you know, I, I created booze vacation cause I couldn't have these conversations and I couldn't influence my friends that knew, liked and trusted me for like decades. And it just pissed me off so much. And on, at the end of the day, I'm just, you know, I'm just concerned about their health and their, their families and all that. And so I think they're kind of, and, and so my, my master plan is to like get all these other people randomly on the internet to do it and then shame my buddies into having to do it eventually. But, um, you know, it's, it's been cool. Like I saw them last week and, um, you know, it, 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 it's definitely brought a lot of awareness to the table and, a lot of respect. And I, I think they're, they're really, they've been really great about it. And again, I'm fifth, I'm in my fifties now. So it's like, if we were in our thirties or something, it would probably be more frat and like more shit talking and stuff like that. But now I think they, they appreciate it and they, they see what I'm doing and why. And so it's good, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, like, yeah, I had some, I had some, you know, I went and, had, and met some buddies and yeah, they had had several IPAs and, and, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't affect our relationships, but you know, I haven't seen him in a while and I, you know, I want it, it does affect, you know, just how we connect and relate because, you know, when you're kind of buzzed, you're kind of just, you know, you kind of get, you know, a little stuck and repeat the stories and it, it just, it does kind of water down the, the connection and, and the energy in the, in the room a little bit, if I were to be honest, but that's, but that's, I'm okay with it, you know, but it's just, you know, it's not, it's not optimal. It's like, you know, as you get older, you know, you only have so much time with your buddies. And so when you do, you want that, you don't want, you want those interactions to be as strong as they can be. And, and you know, they, they can still get a little bit eroded um, by, you know, somebody's a little kind of out of it, but it is what it is. But, did you, but everybody's, did you everybody's find... cool. They don't think I'm like weird or anything, but, you know, I am kind of weird. So. Did you find uh, a need to socialize differently with people who were more present or wanted to discuss things yeah. that were at a deeper level? Yeah. And I do, it, it can be kind of tricky. And and some of that's, you know, just podcasts and, and, you know, audio books and, and, and those are interactions as well. And, you know, at the end of the day, some people have more time and, and space to kind of, do inner work and and do that. It just really depends on the situation, but I take it where I can get it. My wife, my wife has a good head on her shoulder. So we talk about it, but um, yeah, it's just, is what it is. And, you know, I think my peer group is all on a similar track. And so, yeah, just kind of busy and yeah, maybe drinking a little bit too much and 
starting to feel the effects of just wear and tear and getting older and more responsibility. So it just, it is what it is. And, um, but yeah, my, my buddies that have done it and, and other, other people that I've connected with that have done it. Yeah. There's some really neat stories to share and, and just how, you know, how you can be an example and how you can have still have fun and, and still have, maybe have a little bit deeper connections with, without it. But again, it's not about judging or anything. It's just trying to give guys a choice. How does booze vacation work specifically and how do you personally implement it in your life? Yeah. You know, so how does it work? So it really starts by just getting some baseline. I hate to say education and awareness. It sounds dull, but you know, I think you just kind of need to realize what you're up against. I think a lot of people like to play dumb and they don't really connect the dots and they think if they go big on the weekend, you know, they'll probably be okay by Monday or Tuesday, but don't realize how, it's kind of rewired their neural circuitry and how there's longer, longer term effects. So just kind of, you know, banging the gong on things you can't unsee, how it crushes testosterone, how it really can really, you know, a couple of drinks can erode your sleep by 40%. You know, I think at the end of the day, if you want to be at your best and if you, you want to have gratitude, you want to have good relationships, there's a lot of things you have to do, especially as you age, you have to sleep well, you have to eat well, you have to exercise, you have to, you know, have some good stress management. It's just all that stuff is just really, you have to have good hormone levels. It's, there's just so much stuff that you just can't do very well. And you ultimately just wind up pissing up wind with your physiology with regular alcohol use. So um, we, we've kind of just set up free tools and resources to get smarter. And then when you're ready, you know, and kind of like, Hey, I'm not sure alcohol is benefiting me. I want to test this out. It's not like you're making any lifetime declarations or, you know, telling everybody to, you know, you're never calling them back or anything like that, but just like, Hey, I'm just <laughs> on this new adventure, check it out. And it's really, again, we're not alcoholics. It's just, it's just the awkwardness of it. And I think people just need a peer to say, Hey, this isn't a dumb idea. You should check it out. You have nothing to lose. And guess what? Like, everybody really likes it when they do it, but it's just kind of one of those things like anything that you don't want to do initially, it can be kind of challenging in, especially in our society where we're kind of like this comfort culture where we just want like, you know, a Starbucks and then a bagel and, you know, and a cocktail and, and, and all that stuff and our favorite show. So it's easy to kind of numb out. And as far as how I've, how it's affected me, you know, I've, I've taken, I've taken a one year booze vacation and, you know, had a couple of drinks after that. And then I've taken, you know, you know, whenever you want to look and feel good and perform at your best, if you have a special event, that's always a great time to, you know, you got a wedding plan, whatever it is, it's always a great time to take a booze vacation. So yeah, I took one, I took my first one when I was 46. I took a six month of those for a year and that was really impactful, but I still drank drink, you know, after that, maybe a, a drink or two, you know, it kind of made me smarter and, and I drank a lot less and for different reasons. And then over time I started drinking a little bit more and I said, oh, I don't really like where this is going. So I took another one. So it's just kind of a way to kind of, you know, reset. And then, you know, I was, I was turning 50 at a, a, a surfing trip to Nicaragua plan where we we're going to surf like 10 foot waves with a buddy from high school. So I took like a six month break because I wanted to make sure I was in great shape for that. And so just the more you do it, the more muscle memory you get. I think, I think from what I, from what I can tell with me and my buddies, I think the, the more, vac more vacations you take, the more of the vacation lifestyle you just kind of keep with you. So um, yeah, it's been, yeah, I rarely drink again. I'm not opposed to it. I'm not saying you can't, but um, that's just, it, it's a choose your own adventure. But like I said, I think, the longer you, the longer your vacation, the more you learn, the more you earn and the more you're going to want to keep. And so with that, you'll just wind up drinking probably less and for different reasons. Choose your own adventure. I think some people out there would know that reference and we'll <laughs> don't, right? <laughs> oh yeah. I, yeah. Those books. Yeah. Those are, those are sweet. Yeah. That, I'm pretty old school. <laughs> so Clifford, if someone wanted to know more about Booze Vacation, where would they go? Uh, Boozevacation.com boozevacation.com is pretty easy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Great. And, and I'd love, you know, again, I think it's a, I think it's a cool couples exercise. And even if you're not ready to quit drinking, I think just getting some education and awareness and, and kind of testing out some of the stuff, how it can kind of affect your mood or your energy. And if you like, if you get like a sleep tracker, like an aura ring or an Apple watch, like it's pretty scary what it does to your like resting heart rate and heart rate variability and sleep and readiness scores. So 
it's just something to kind of kind of check out. And again, it's not it's not about sobriety, but it's just hopefully about doing life better and and having more options and and yeah, and and having better energy to engage with your partner because you know marriage is tricky and you know there's a lot of crazy things going on in this world and and having something that's going to just turn up the stress and lower your mood is is not not optimal if you can, uh, if you can test it and see for yourself. And I know you've said this multiple times, but I think it's important to stress it to the audience is that we're not talking about someone who has a severe alcoholic problem. You know, that is someone who definitely needs to seek treatment, um, and, and AA as well, right? This is, we're talking about, you know, people who don't have an alcoholic issue or alcoholic dependency, you know, and they want to make a shift and change in their life. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, I think a lot of my peers aren't looking to change their drinking habits per se, but they might be trying to get healthier or they might be trying to improve their blood work without prescriptions, or they might want to, you know, have a better sex life or, or just less drama or connection, you know, better connection with their partner, you know, improve performance on the field or with business. So I think it's, they're typically not seeking to change their drinking, but it's kind of the master key to help with all those things. And so, yeah, that's why it's, it's an interesting offer. I've essentially created something for people that don't, aren't looking for it and don't want it, <laughs> but, but they, but they do you know directly, but they, they do indirectly. So it's kind of, kind of what we're doing. Well, great. We are going to, you know, put that uh, website in the show notes so that if anyone is interested in getting more information about it, you know, they can access uh, boozevacations.com. And Clifford, we want to thank you so much for being on our podcast today. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I hope that was a uh, c- couple, couple enough as far as, even though it's kind of a, a men's health and all this play, but I think it has a lot of good, um, you know, alignment, alignment with, with, uh, with couples and, and, and how they can have hopefully better relationships. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is important. We've done uh, episodes about women's health specifically. And so this is really nice to be able to feature men's health as well. Yeah. And this last, last little point, it's alcohol is, is almost twice as bad on, on females than it is on males. So I'm focusing on males because I'm staying in my own lane, but yeah, the, the direct correlation with, with cancer risk and, and stress. And, you know, I think females often are, are carrying the lion's share with, with managing the family. So I think women getting smart with their alcohol use, even though, like I said, I think they're not in that culture of playing dumb with it, but I think it's really important for women to figure that out as well. Cause they're That's typically nice. smaller, don't process it as well. So it's, it's pretty critical as well. Absolutely. Well, great. Thank you again for being on our podcast today. We want to thank all of you, for joining us on Couple Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples and people have happy health and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. For all of you listening, please let us know how you enjoy the show. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs such as Relationship 101, the home study course, the next Couples Relationship Enhancement Weekend, and our premier co- couples coaching program called Couple to Couple, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And if you know someone who can benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.